Hi everyone, this is my unboxing and sort of initial impressions of Waterloo 1815, Fallen Eagles 2, uh, published by Hexasim. I have um, played a few of the Napoleonic games from Hexasim and very much enjoyed them and have featured them uh, quite a lot on my channel. So when this has come back into print, I picked up a copy, I bought a copy from the good people at Second Chance Games here in the UK. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at what's inside and I'll give some sort of overview as to my initial thoughts to it. So if we have a look at the back of the box, um, we've got uh, here French and English versions. Um, it is a, Hexasim is a French company. I'm not entirely sure if the game is printed in France. It says printed in Western Europe. Um, but the game is completely, has, you know, full English language. So we get four die, count, die cut counter sheets. One uh, large map that's in two parts, full colour rule book, full, full colour playbook, playing cards, player aids, and a couple of dice. Interestingly, the complexity out of nine is sort of in the middle, sort of four stroke five. Um, I'll, when I do a full review of this, I'll sort of talk about how I, you know, uh, how complex I find the game. Certainly, the other games from Hexasim, the other Napoleonic games. That sort of medium complexity, I think, is probably about right. Uh, solitaire suitability. And I will be play, playing this uh, solitaire, playing it uh, solo. I don't think the game is true solitaire in the sense that it has an AI bot or system. Instead, I'll, I will be playing it two-handed, playing both sides. Um, but the solitaire suitability is sort of seven out of nine. And again, if I compare that to their other Napoleonic games... I would say that's probably about that's about right. Uh, scale, map, uh, hex 200 meters per hex, and the unit size are regiments. Um, we have, so this apparently, according to the copy on the back here, this is a new edition of Waterloo 1815, with a revised order of battle, a new map, uh, with improved topography, oh, I can't pronounce that, topographic accuracy. Um, We've got, uh, I think it's maybe an up-to-date series of the rules, I would imagine. And uh, it is, uh, the focus remains on morale, attrition, and commitment of formation, division, and court at the right time rather than tactical crime. So we'll have a look at the rule books and have a look at the counters and have a look at the map. So we'll start with the rule book itself. Um, interestingly, um, uh, this is the series rules, October 2022, 20, uh, version 2.3. I think the, um, I have covered, just to give some background, I, ha I have covered uh, the Catrabra game and Lindy game on my channel. I just had a quick look in my copies of those. And the last rule set I had for those was, I think, March 2019. So um, this is a revised set of rules, so I'll be interested to see what, what changes they've made to the core rules. Um, I haven't played the Austerlitz game. Um, I think I might pick that up from Second Chance next, I think. Um, the actual rule book themselves, uh, full colour, looks nicely laid out. Um, uh, I wonder maybe if these are the updates, maybe the things in green. I should, yeah, I'll double check. Um, certainly, when I've played the other games in this series, the ones that I've played, I wouldn't say this is a terribly overly complex game and sort of medium complexity sort of, sort of feels right to me. But uh, I've never had any issues with the rule book. We've got some examples. Again, very nicely laid out. I shall enjoy reading through these. I haven't played. I will need to go through the rule book again. Um, a few times I've, I haven't played uh, a game in this series for a little while, I think. And um, I certainly will be interested to see what rules they have changed or dated or probably made more clear, I would expect, to be honest with you. Maybe more than changes. But that, yeah, that looks very nice. I'll enjoy going through this. Uh, Twenty Coming in at 20, 24 pages. So uh, not too much at all. So here we've got the um, playbook itself. Nice cover. Uh, again, full colour. Um, there are 
from what I believe there are quite there are a few scenarios some of the scenarios are I think look to be single map some of them are two maps um, here we've got Hugamont um, play area use the scenario one minimap oh I uh, will have a look at that in a minute scenario two using the scenario two map scenario three th use scenario three maps uh, I can see the pattern here um, scenario four um, uh, that I would expect to be both maps let's have a look um, I can't see it but uh, oh all the game all the game map is in use so I expect that to be the both them the full size map then we've got some alternative history cards for scenario four again very nicely laid out nice color or some more examples of play always welcome um, just so you can when you're going through the rules and put the counters out in front of you I often will do literally follow these put the counters out go through the examples and then roll some dice and see what uh, variations you can have to help understand the mechanics but it doesn't look too again doesn't look first or oh, first first impressions doesn't look too complicated at all um, if you if you're used to um, uh, Napoleonic War games, um, a wine of the Waterloo game, you can just never have too many. Is the answer to that, in my opinion, as a um, a big uh, enthusiast of the uh, of this period of history. But I will be interested to see. Joking aside, I'll be interested to see what um, take it is on on that. You know. One of the most famous battles of history so uh looking forward to reading through this oh yes this is good more player notes historical context excellent looking very much looking forward to sit in here sitting maybe with a coffee cup of tea as uh, i'm from the uk cup of tea and reading through that looks great again very nicely done full credits that looks great uh great bibliography um some of those books look familiar some of them less so so uh, looking forward to doing some research on to some of those it was great i thought we'd jump ahead and have a look at the counters one of the things i like about the game is the um the quality of the, of the components um interestingly the counter sheets uh came shrink wrapped i've just uh, taken them off um, but the actual game itself isn't shrink wrapped um counters look very nice you don't they're called they're, they're quite a good size counter um and they punch out very nicely and they're they're one of those sort of a rounded examples so you don't need to clip your counters if you are of the clipping persuasion um uh these look great and they look very consistent with the counter layout from the other games as from this publisher that I've played. Um, here we have Nay, for example. Uh, these look very nice. Um, they look well printed. They look like they've been uh, trimmed nicely. Uh, certainly the other games in the series, everything I've, I've everything that I've ever bought from Hexasim has been of a very high production standard and this looks no different. Um, yeah, these look great. Um, uh, got some French uh, horse units here. Oh, they look nice. Yes, yes, yes. Napoleon himself. Uh, these look great. Very much looking forward to punching these. And uh, yeah, four sheets of counters for this game. I can't remember the top of my head how many um, sheets you get in the other games. Probably the same. I feel. Um, I could go back and watch my own videos to find out. Um, but they look, these look great. Um, Hizzox Bridge. Yep, yep, very nice. These look really nice, really good. So before we get to looking at the um, maps, I thought we'd have a look at some of the other components in the game. These are the cards. Um, I, I can't remember if you need to play with the cards or if they're an optional thing. Um, like I said, it's been a little while since I've played one of the games in this series. Um, 
but these look they look great um, nicely finished the interesting thing because it's um I think maybe some people feel because it's a French publisher um, all the components are going to be in French or French and English this is not the case everything that I've seen so far is in English only um, so if you're not a French reader which I'm not um, you've got nothing to worry about um, but these are some I'll just go through some examples let's have a look at some very nicely laid out some wonderful um, uh, historic period art on the cards yes very nice very nice indeed excellent these are ex some of the examples of the player aids I'm, I'm not going to show each one there's quite a few um, but they again uh, this is the turn track for example very nicely laid out uh, there's some, some indications to the scenario so information there relating specifically to the scenario nice uh, uh, very nice card stock um, here's our terrain effects chart um, again looks very nicely laid out movement costs specifically to infantry artillery and cavalry or horses I like to call them um, fire dice roll modifiers melee dice roll modifiers and so forth again very nicely done um, these are what I would imagine to be the order of battle scenario setup uh, which is extremely useful um, again nicely laid out they look good and then here we've got some examples of the orders charts um, which I will need to re-familiarise myself with how the order system works for the game. From memory it wasn't quite as, as complicated as I first thought. Oh okay so here we've got uh, a map uh, example. So this is the uh, Hougamont map, the Red Fortress. Um, so it looks to be like a, a very small scenario, very small map. Um, from yeah, from memory now that I say that I can remember with um, maybe it's linear. I can't. I think there's um, the main battle map, and then there are other maps specifically for specific scenarios. So I'll probably play. Surprisingly, I'll probably play scenario one first. Um, and then we've got that looks to be the French order of battle for the main the main game. There, yeah, that's probably going to take quite a while to play that, I would imagine. This looks like it not take very long at all. Um, and here we have our melee table. Very straightforward melee from this in this game system, as I recall. Um, and the fire table on the back. Again, very nicely laid out. Nice cardstock. Nice finish. Looks a high quality. So this is an example um, of one of the smaller maps. This is scenario two. So what the game appears to have is a very small map for scenario one and then a bigger map for scenario two and three and this is double sided. Um, one of the things I do like about a Hexasim as a publisher and then Napoleonic games, the maps I think are absolutely gorgeous and incredibly well done. Um, nice vibrant colours, everything looks in keeping with the period. I really like the aesthetic that they've gone for with their maps as very nice cardstock. Um, I will play under Plexi, uh, even though filming it is a nightmare <laughs> because of the light reflection, um, but I will play under Plexi. Um, but it's very nice cardstock, very, again, very high quality. On the back, this is a reverse map. We have, I hope you, you can see that, move it to the center there, scenario three. So it visually is a bit much more interesting as you'd approach, you know, it's suitable for the scenario itself. Um, again, very nicely done. Very, looks to me on first glance, very clear the contents of the individual hex when it comes to the terrain chart, for example. Um, yeah, this, these look great. And I like, I really do like uh, games that have multiple, when they have multiple um, scenarios, if they've got multiple size maps, it means you, 
generally speaking, from my experience, the smaller the map, the quicker the playing scenario. It's not always true with Napoleonics, but for the most part, I go out on a limb and say is, which means that you know um, that if you've got a, a smaller space, not so much time, you can place one of these out and place through one of these games. Um, if you've got more time, more space, you can obviously play the big double map. Let's have a look at the, um, the full size maps next. So this is just one of the full size maps that you get. Um, and it looks absolutely, absolutely lovely. Um, it's a little bit too big for me to show full frame on my camera on this table that I'm using. The other table that I have that I play large, sort of two or three full size maps games on is I've already got a game set up on that. So um, we're gonna have to make do with this for today. But the actual quality of the artwork looks incredible. The aesthetic of the map, uh, the, the visual language I, I really like. Um, this absolutely looks looks great and it looks like a game dying to be played which is also very nice and again keeping in in my opinion keeping in in tone thematic tone of the historic period um, got all the key locations it says it says very quickly scanning through the map so yeah again nice card stock um, so maybe it's a bit thinner than the other maps more of a paper stock actually um, but uh, looks great again to be played under plexi for sure and then finally the uh, second part to that large map experience for the scenario 4 game uh, again looks absolutely great so if you want to play the main the main course we'll say of the game it is a two map game but you do have that ability to play um, scenarios one, two, and three on much, much, much smaller maps. Um, again, the artwork looks great. Paper quality high. Interestingly, with both these maps, um, they, the, the actual map itself is just a map. There's no, doesn't seem to be any um, player aids except for maybe entry points um, on the map, but very uncluttered, uh, which I really like. Um, looks like a a um, looks like a you know a hex based war gamers um, Napoleonic um, map which looks great which I'm very happy with. Just, um, I'm very much looking forward to getting these games to the table. As I've said, just to sort of conclude, I've enjoyed all the Napoleonic games from Hexasim. Um, I've covered them quite a lot on my channel. I'm very much looking forward to getting this to the table. Um, it's Waterloo. I've played Waterloo um, quite a few times, as you can imagine, with quite a few different game systems. But it's still a battle that, um, saying that, I've played Austerlitz uh, quite a few times in quite a different few few different game systems. Um, I can think of three or four top of my head without without even uh, scratching my head too hard, you know. So I am yeah, very much looking forward to this getting to the table. I probably will go through each scenario in turn and and then finish with the actual um, main scenario itself and then what i'll probably do time permitting i may do some after action reports for some of the smaller scenarios um, i may do one for the large scenario as well and then i'll do a full review and give some sort of concluding thoughts to how i find how i have found sorry learning the rules playing the game um, and going through those different scenarios so Looks a great game in addition to the series. Um, certainly, um, I'm very happy with what I spend my money on. It's not an expensive game um, here in the UK. Um, I think you can get Hexasim games from GMT if you're in the States, but certainly here in Europe, this is this is not an expensive game system to get into. I think it's a good game system to get into if you're new to Napoleonics or I've played other Napoleonic games. I think it hits that sweet uh, spot for me. Certainly, I've been very happy with the other games I've played in the series. So looking forward to this. Um, thank you very much for watching as always. And yeah, take care. Thank you.